great. Yep, so we will be recording the meeting because we had a few people who said they couldn't make it, but they would like to see the message. So that will go up, go up on our re, on our reclone YouTube. Um, if you do not want to be featured in the recording, um, you can turn off your camera. Um, we welcome cameras on because it's always nice to see everybody's lovely faces. Um, but you know, do do as you as you please, um, and just let us know if you want to participate in the meeting by asking a question at a later point, but you would prefer not to be featured in the recording, that is no problem. Just drop Sibeli or myself a note and we will cut that out before it goes on YouTube. Um, but hopefully <laughs> we, won't have, we won't have too many things that uh, are not uh, fit for, for a broadcast. So um, fingers crossed, everybody's happy. Just let us know if you're not. Um, so a couple of um, housekeeping points. So um, we will be, as well as recording the meeting, We'll be having chat in side chat in the um, chat bar. So feel free to ask questions there. I know some people might be joining on limited bandwidth um, and not necessarily able to participate vocally. So do use make use of that. I will feed back questions from the chat that I see appearing and feel free to have side conversations and other stuff going on there. We try to keep it quite engaging meeting. Um, we're going to kick off the day Firstly, talking about um, contributions to the open enzyme collections. So I'm going to do a very, very fast intro to the collections um, and the context of why we're asking for your suggestions. And then we're going to make it basically a kind of round table of thoughts, uh, parts that you'd like to see. Um, we have a spreadsheet that we will share with you where we've compiled all the new suggestions to date into a wish list. Um, so you're very welcome to edit that directly. It's a Google Doc. Um, but if you are not sure if a part is relevant, if you just want to get some other people's opinions, you know what you want, but you're not sure like the best one of that variety of enzyme or tag, um, we can have a conversation here. Um, and then we'll wrap that up um, just in about the 25 to 30 minutes and transition to um, Jordi's presentation. Um, and hopefully a, a few minutes at the end for questions and wrap up. Um, so uh, you can ask questions in the chat um, when we have, feel free to raise your hand on the Zoom raising hand button or on your video screens um, as we have the discussion. Uh, there's obviously quite a lot of us and I want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to speak. So as we, we're talking about the parts, um, if possible, try and ask one question or make one point at a time and we'll kind of keep the discussion moving forward. Um, I think that's probably about it for logistics for today. Um, so we'll move on swiftly to presenting the collections for those who've not um, been here before. So could you raise your Zoom hand if this is your first time on a reclone meeting call, just so I get a sense of who's new to the community. Okay, cool. So we've got, all right, we've got a few. Yep. Excellent. So maybe a quarter of you or so haven't been before. Um, so you're very welcome. We have these calls once a month. Um, pretty informally, normally with a person presenting and then a discussion, um, but I'll introduce a little bit about what Reclone is. So this is a community that was started in 2020, um, partly as a way to collaborate on and propagate the open source DNA collections that came out of my lab at the University of Cambridge and a, a whole collection of collaborators. Um, so my name is Jenny Malloy, if we haven't met before, um, and I'm based here in Cambridge um, in the Department of Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology. And my group have been developing these open source toolkits, primarily for expressing enzymes, um, but also we have reporter collections and other things. So I will just share my screen now to give a very quick overview um, and then explain why, <clears throat> why we're here today talking about the collections again. Um, so, so this is the Reclaim meeting. Um, a lot of the work that we've done in this group is thinking about addressing supply chain challenges for reagents. So this is just a map of um, export of laboratory reagents, which is kind of a proxy for manufacturing. So you can see that in many parts of the world, there's very limited manufacturing of enzymes and that most molecular biology reagents come from a small subset of the, of the world. Um, and that can cause problems in terms of delays um, in getting the tools that you need, we need to do science. Um, and so that's the motivation behind this is basically to figure out how we can push public domain technologies where the patents have expired or they were made open source in the first place 
out to actually get to people's benches because there are loads of these tools out there now, but they're not necessarily in people's labs and in a useful format. And so the idea was to kind of have these collections and protocols so people could manufacture their own enzymes and have their own kind of tools um, that they could reconfigure in ways that they want to. Um, and effectively have this much, much more decentralized manufacturing network for um, molecular biology reagents. Um, and so a lot of the parts in the collection are related to enzyme production. So we've got quite a lot of um, you know, expression based regulatory elements. Um, we've got quite a lot of proteins and enzymes, we've got reporters, we've got affinity tags, and it's basically trying around this theme. Um, we are hoping to extend these collections, that's kind of why we're here today, but we're also open to new ideas. So feel free, even if your idea is a little outside of the scope of what we've done so far, to propose it anyway, and we'll see what we can do. But this is just the kind of original motivation and goals of the group. And so the current collections have mostly promoters, tags for affinity purification, reporters, cleavage sites, coding sequences and terminators for E. coli. So this is another direction we could take. Um, the expansion is perhaps having stuff other than E. coli and Scott um, has a great example with the open yeast collection and I will pass over to Scott to mention that in a few minutes. Um, but this is where we started. We also, something's gone wrong with my little cover up there, um, but we made a, a collection as a, as a sort of a reclone community for research and diagnostics, which featured a lot of the same parts, but in, in, an, in a kind of design syntax. So it's much easier to assemble um, into useful expression constructs. And it also included some kind of ready to go expression cassettes, um, just trying to ease, ease in people who maybe are less familiar with DNA assembly and would like something that they can just pop in a bacteria and go. Uh, we're currently redesigning, I say we, it's mostly Felipe who's on the call, <laughs> currently putting all of these expression cassettes into a better backbone that was um, designed, well, tested over in Chile with Fernand Federici's group because our original backbone was not brilliant for expression. Um, so we're, we're definitely updating the collection with, a new, with new expression cassettes and ready to go plasmids, but we're also keen to expand the scope of the parts in the collection as well. So we now have nearly 200 interchangeable elements that are available in the toolkits um, for E. coli. Um, and basically uh, we've been distributing these under the Open Material Transfer Agreement via AdGene and the Free Genes Project, which is currently on, in, on hiatus, it's in hibernation, but they were shipping our collections out from Stanford um, for quite some time. And that's probably how many of you on the call received your copies of the collections. Um, so just a quick note that if you, you know, continue the discussion after the call, we'll come back to this at the end. We do have a forum, forum.reclone.org. So sign up if you haven't already. Um, and we're trying to put protocols for the enzyme expression onto protocols.io as much as possible. So if you have something you'd like to express and you get a lovely working protocol, do add it to the reclone protocols.io collection so that others do not have to go through all of the troubleshooting that you did. Um, and we have some protocols, not only for individual enzymes, but also general methods. So for example, um, plate-based expression. I think I have a couple of slides on plate-based expression, but I'm gonna skip over those because they are not relevant for this meeting. Um, but yeah, to join, join the reclone, meet, uh, reclone forum and keep coming to the community meetings, we would love to see you again. Um, that's the context of what we have now. Uh, the reason that we're having this discussion today is because I was fortunate to get um, some money, so £20,000, which in DNA synthesis terms is quite a bit, but also not loads, um, to add parts to the collection. And so uh, we have to spend the money quite quickly <laughs> because it's it's got a very tight deadline on it. I got awarded the grant like a week ago and we have to spend it by three weeks time. <laughs> so this is why we've had this meeting a reasonably short notice. Um, and yeah, we're basically keen to find out what you would like to see in the collections. Now we're going to paste into the chat um, a, I've shown you roughly what we have. I guess the question is what exactly do we have? So I'm going to paste a spreadsheet into the chat now that you're, well, you can open. It's a Google Doc spreadsheet and it's got two tabs in it. Um, one says existing parts, which is basically a list of everything that we currently have in the collection. 
And then on the first tab, there's wish list, which is populated with things that people have already asked for. Um, so that's where we're, we're going to solicit suggestions. You can also send them to me, um, but it's probably better to put them straight into here so that it's all in one place. Um, and yeah, I'd like to now open the floor to basically anyone who's got either questions or clarifications about what is possible and what isn't. Um, and then secondly, any, any suggestions of what you'd like to see, where you might want to kind of get some feedback from the group um, or just discuss the relevance, if it's in scope, et cetera. Um, we're not gonna be able to synthesize everything on the list. And we're currently negotiating for some discounts, <laughs> but I think we're still not gonna, going to be in a position where we can do everything. So there will be some prioritization um, and it would be very useful to hear from you how you think that prioritization should happen. Due to the very short timeline, I think ultimately it's probably going to be like the people that are compiling the stuff to go for synthesis that end up deciding based on how long it's going to take us to get everything prepared what goes into this round and what doesn't um, and also there'll be a high priority for stuff that is very clearly useful to many labs um, versus stuff that's pretty specific to a few labs I think beyond that we haven't got very strict criteria um, so I will um, I'll stop there and just invite anybody who has a comment or question um, to either pop it in the chat or uh, pop your Zoom or real life hand up and we'll, we'll start talking. And actually, if I would also invite Scott to put his hand up so he can tell us a little bit about the yeast collection as well, because you'll notice on the wish list that there's loads of stuff from Scott already because he's been very prepared. <laughs> <for this. laughs> Yeah, actually, I can, I can actually, uh, uh, yes, I've got screen sharing. So if I can uh, just share oh, yeah. some slides, just to do a quick introduction to the Open East collection and um, uh, what I'm planning to do. Uh, let me see, I'm jumping around. Sorry, it's uh, uh, early in the morning for me. I don't normally wake yeah, up this early. Wasn't, wasn't around when we covered this earlier. Um, so while Scott's sharing his screen, just you can have a dig around that spreadsheet and have a think about things that you would like to add. Okay, and I will, Zoom always gets in the way here, let's do, um, okay, so just a quick um, overview of the Open Use Collection. It's a, a collection of uh, DNA parts that allow you to engineer. Um, the current version is um, Saccharomyces cerevisiae as well as Pachya pastoris. Um, so uh, these are the types of parts that are available. Um, um, so there, there are parts that are focused on the transcription unit um, and then there are flanking homology regions. So if you want to integrate into yeast, there's also the, if you're familiar with yeast uh, work, um, the two micron circle and uh, a pickia, the, a, another uh, or, um, origin. So um, you can have episomal uh, growth if you want, uh, but a, a lot of people end up integrating into the genome. So there's some backbone parts. Um, the, uh, yeah, the homology arms are for integration. There's a, a whole series of uh, selection markers uh, that you can pick from. And then uh, the transcription unit, there's a bunch of uh, both Saccharomyces and uh, Pichia um, promoters uh, and uh, terminators. And you get to add in your own gene of interest in there. Uh, so this is the original Open East collection that was uh, synthesized by Free Genes, Drew group um, and it's been out for ooh, how long has it been a year and a half or, no, or so um, and this is basically the list of what um, it, uh, is there um, and what I'll do is jump over to uh, my other slide and Zoom is always getting their toolbar in the way um, so this one is what I'm planning um, uh, what I've designed. So um, uh, I, I have to thank my uh, collaborator, Ian Caven, who's a member of my lab. He's a, a Python programmer, and he's been uh, super helpful at uh, automating a lot of the automation. Uh, so essentially what we did was we took the, um, the uh, protein, E. coli protein expression toolkit. Uh, so this is the open yeast toolkit in, um, in, uh, 
at Free Genes. And I'm just going to go over to, oh, no, wrong place. Uh, it's under organismal development. And I'll throw these links in chat. Uh, but this is Jenny's um, protein, E. coli protein expression toolkit. So there's a whole list of parts to be able to engineer E. coli. Um, we've got a really cool parts um, um, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, chitin binding domain. Um, the R5 is the, the silica binding domain. So if you want to try to um, fuse this to your gene of interest um, uh, to be able to purify with um, uh, silica, um, this would be a cool tool to have. And there's a whole bunch of things there. And some things that are just related to E. coli, um, terminators and uh, regulatory sequences. Uh, and there's also a number of uh, uh, genes in there. Um, so it's a very, very uh, useful toolkit. And so um, what uh, Ian and I did was uh, take that, sorry for the jumping around, and um, uh, convert a lot of those parts into um, uh, codon optimized for yeast, uh, in, in particular Pichia pastoris. Uh, but they should work in Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And uh, so up at the top is kind of like the positioning, and this is borrowing heavily from Jenny's uh, protein expression toolkit, E. coli. Um, and uh, so the CDS is where you put your gene of interest. So uh, for those who aren't familiar with Golden Gate Assembly, it's basically using BSA-1. Uh, and these are the overhangs. So um, at this position, um, I've got a whole bunch of parts that are um, useful for um, uh, secretion. Uh, Picky is a good secretor. So if you can coax it to um, secrete your protein of interest. So none of these parts are in the E. coli protein expression toolkit because they're these kind of specific things. Um, and then we have, of course, the, um, the different purification tags um, uh, that's the same as in um, the protein. E. coli protein expression toolkits, as well as other things. Uh, so th there are um, uh, the cleavage domains. I've added a few extra that aren't in the protein expression toolkit. Um, and then also on the C terminus, um, you have options there. Uh, so uh, between your gene of interest uh, and the terminator, if you want to fight. Uh, 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 enter, sorry, C terminally modify or, or three prime modify your gene, um, you can put in. And I was developing these um, uh, and have been in conversation with Drew Endy. So he's planning to raise funding to be able to start um, uh, the free genes operation again. Um, uh, but then Jenny had this amazing opportunity. So um, we'll have to see how the budget goes as to what actually gets in, you know, like if everybody piles in their genes of interest, then, you know, I'll just pull things off of here so that they, everybody can get some of the uh, synthesis. Okay, so um, I spoke too much. I'll throw these in chat. I'll stop, stop sharing and go back to Jenny. All uh, right. Thanks, Scott. Well, really, it's over to you guys, and there's already been some good good chat in the um, in the chat box. So, uh, Benjamin, yes, type two S restriction enzymes. Um, so they some of them are listed. We didn't end up synthesizing all of them. So we have SAP one, Echo R one, and a BSA one isoschizomer. So BSA one itself is actually still under an active patent, but um, Thermo have. Are basically an enzyme that cuts the same recognition site that is not patented so we have we have that one um but yeah if there's other ones that you would like um then definitely add them to the list because we'll the ones that are already listed on one of our spreadsheets we'll 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 put those back through so basically some of them failed synthesis they didn't make it through the first <laughs> the first round um but yeah definitely add them and we can see what we can do obviously the the enzymes themselves are like the most expensive bit for the synthesis so um, we are a bit restricted probably on how many full enzyme sequences we can do, but I think a lot of people are using type 2S assembly. It's definitely something that we'd be happy to support. Um, also, if anybody's interested in like better ways to express type 2S restriction enzymes, uh, love to have a conversation with you about that. We have some ideas and no time to try them. So <laughs> maybe a topic for another reclone meeting. Um, 
yeah so any anyone want to speak with their uh zoom hand or real hand up so hi jenny hi. so is, is there a chance that we can add some um biosensors there and maybe some biomarkers well i if you can ask us because um we're planning to make a grant proposal uh using um cell free expression made uh protein switches like that so would be useful for us though if we could have some biosensors like nanobodies or other stuff or, and the biomarkers that they have i think that's that's for us okay so I think if they're if they're useful not only for you but for other people, then we can pop them in these collections. What we can't do is like fun stuff that no one else wants. <laughs> but if there's a sort of nanobody that is used quite a lot, um, and it's sort of certain things we've discussed before are things like um, histag antibodies, super useful for a bunch of people. Um, so anything like that, if it's like one very specific disease biomarker or one very specific disease antibody that's a relevance to a very small group of labs, then that's less something we could prioritize. But I mean, I would say stick it down anyway. And basically, um, if it seems like not that many people are going to use it, it will just get pushed down the list. Um, but, you know, if we get some more funding, then maybe it will make it <laughs> up the list. But I think the, the general idea of these is that they're, sh they're shared collections that are useful for the community. Um, so I will leave it to your judgment <laughs> what you think fits that definition. <laughs> but nanobodies are cool. Nanobodies, just watch out for the IP. But I mean, we would be, you know, anything with single chain antibodies also, um, yeah. We, we might have to do a little bit more exploration because we haven't tried those before, but it's very open to give it a go. Any other suggestions people want to run by the group? Uh, we just got a question uh, from Manuel, if it's possible to add nano look luciferase to the wish list. If it is not covered by an active patent, then stick it on. I'm not sure. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, it is for sure. That's the only restriction. So if you're not sure, pop it on the wish list anyway. And then when it says, have you checked if the patent has expired, just put no and um, we'll check. But any, anyone got ideas of how old nano luciferase is? If it's if it's more than twenty years old, then it's it, you're good generally speaking. Um, but sometimes patents get dropped, so they you have to pay fees to maintain them. And so occasionally, whoever took out the patent stopped paying the fees, and then it becomes available much sooner. So fingers crossed. A lot of our reporter collection was that situation. The reporters shouldn't have been open for another few years, but NIH stopped paying the patent fees, and so they're now inactive. Uh, oh yes, so yeah, if, um, those who are joining just now, we post we pasted a link earlier. So there's another uh, another link just been posted by Sibeli, which is the spreadsheet where we're adding stuff to the list. Uh, anyway, sorry, Jenny, related to Manuel's question. Mm -hmm. So because I, I saw Nano look in the reporters section in your website, but it says digital only. I don't know what that means. Oh, that probably means we, we, for whatever reason we didn't get it synthesized last time around. So some of the stuff that's um, that's on the list the, where it says digital is because we usually it's because we either found a problem, which meant we couldn't synthesize it, or we tried to synthesize it and it failed. And then we kind of ran out of cycles to try again. Yeah, we had surprisingly quite a lot of issues with what you would imagine are quite simple things to well we don't think it was a synthesis there was some issue at twist with cloning so they were actually getting the dna but then it wasn't cl cloning in properly and some of that stuff they just sent the dna anyway and we managed to stanford managed to get it but not everything um honey self-reproduction yeah i mean knock yourself out i mean they're, they're there for whatever you would like to try with them um we've tried self-free production of a number of the enzymes um, and we definitely uh, we got good results with some of the DNA polymerases. Um, we had a few issues with the restriction enzymes. Um, they're definitely there. They're just very difficult to see because you're expressing in such a small volume generally with cell free. 
um, it can be a bit difficult to see them on the STS page. So we thought we didn't have them. Um, but then at, when uh, Chiara, who worked a lot on the collections, tested functionality, it, it worked because you only need a very small amount. Um, but we're trying with the latest expression set, so Felipe soonish. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be trying to express them in cell free um, and they should they should work I mean obviously it, mileage will vary but um, is that something you'd be keen to try Hini? Yeah uh, I currently run a project on uh, manufacturing of enzyme not or not from uh, diagnosis enzyme or molecular based enzyme uh, I use just some source of industrial enzyme that carbohydrate bears in general and that's used in food industries uh, uh, some of the textile industry as well, just like lipases, uh, IA, and uh, pectinases, as well as uh, uh, chitinases. So these are three to four zelenases as well. Three, three to four enzymes uh, I try. Currently, I use the traditional fermentation system for their production. Uh, but I plan to get part of my project, the two-year project, the first components is just uh, um, just to screen out what type of organism uh, is producing such a huge amount of enzyme. Then we will try to produce on 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 uh, using self reinstruction system that may be able to do these enzyme production as well. Uh, so the reclone is only for I think majority of enzymes you people are using are from molecular sciences. So. Uh, that is the difference. I, I just raised their plan to using another enzyme that's uh, uh, for the industries uh, or not. I don't know about Triclone or use other enzymes as well. We just hold on. I'd be really keen. Yeah. And so one of the things we've been discussing within my group is kind of a, a sort of in sustainable industry or circular bioeconomy collection that's more aimed at these these sorts of enzymes that could be useful in in beyond the lab um yes. so very open to that i mean even if we can't fit it into this funding like definitely it's something i think is fundable by um you know a lot of people want to see more adoption of bio techniques and enzym enzymatic processing so i think um if any yeah if you have interest in that and anyone else has interest more in the kind of like industrial sustainability and industrial applicable mm. enzymes um let's get together a, a wish list and you know let's see what we can we can do i'm happy to tout this to other people that might have funding <laughs> once we run out of the twenty thousand. Yeah. um yeah but my question so i have a question for you though because it's not my area so i'm much more familiar with the molecular biology enzymes and i know that for those it's kind of reasonably generic so like we just we've just picked a number of DNA polymerases that we know are useful across a number of labs and they're fairly standardized. So my question for that is, are there like really good lipases that lots of people use or does it tend to be? My impression has been that there's lots, just lots more enzymes and sequences out there, but that could be entirely incorrect impression. So do you feel like it is an area where we could select like representative types of each enzyme and it would be useful? Yeah, uh, I think so because uh, I don't know some enzyme may be used for the uh, currently we use uh, uh, basically when we talk about the uh, plastic degrading enzyme now now become cutin as is also also some source of uh, uh, a lot of truths. Uh, yeah, it is possible because the the the, the, the molecular uh, uh, design is not uh, or not much uh, different from molecular enzyme as well. So is it possible to do that as well? I think so. Yeah. Great, uh, that's good to know. Just out of interest before we move on to another question, who else on the call would be potentially interested in talking about a kind of toolkit for, um, I don't know what, call, like sustainability of processes, more kind of industrial biotechnology toolkit. Any interest in that? My hands up or? Uh, I see one hand up, Hanif obviously as well, a couple of hands. All right, so there's only a small, it's a smaller subset. That's understandable because we built this community around the, the molecular biology side. But I know Jordi, who um, I think is having trouble joining the Zoom. I've just reached out to her on WhatsApp. Um, Jordi comes from the enzymology group at the Biotechnology, Bio and Emerging Technologies Institute in Ethiopia, and they're very interested in this area. So maybe we can have a, a sort of one of the monthly meetings just talking about that idea of is the space to have a useful collection for, for those types of applications. Um, 
All right, great, thanks, Hanif. Um, oh, just on the self-free point, um, if anyone has specific uh, specific parts that would pretty much only be useful for self-free expression, feel free to put them in. Um, I know that, for example, we don't have like sigma factor promoters in the current collection, which are quite useful for self-free, self -free, but not so much for a kind of in, in vivo expression, or like they're less used anyway, but in vivo. Um, Fanan I see is on the call, who has already submitted a couple of uh, suggestions. Fanan, do you want to um, let us know a little bit about how you would use the nitrate reductase? If you can. Hi. Hey. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, yes, there is a very well-known uh, reaction that takes place with nitrate uh, uh, reductase to measure nitrogen. And I will put in the chat, there is a nice paper from Joshua Pierce on using open source collimators and that reaction. But the problem for, for us in, in South America is um, getting the enzyme. It's not very expensive, but you know, all the logistic of in, uh, import and all that. So yeah. it would be super useful to, uh, to have it uh, locally produced. Nice. So yeah, too. Well, Aaron, I think was talking about more about sensing in terms of biomedical, if I remember, if I understood correctly. But like environmental sensing is definitely an area we have nothing in the collection really targeting that. So if you feel like there's like very sort of useful and standardized environmental sensing enzymes that would be useful, stick them in. All right, we seem to have run out of um, comments on the chat here. So I think we'll we'll maybe start, oh, Adrian, you've got your hand up, over to you. Yeah, so I, I was looking for a silica binding tag because it makes the downstream processing much, much deeper than using columns. And there is one in, the, in one of the collections, but when I looked at it and when I chased down to the patent, it doesn't seem to be a silica binding tag for, uh, like for for recovery, it seemed to be a, a permanent silica binding tag and and nothing to do with that. Um, how how do we deal with this uh, this, this uh, situation? Yeah, so the one in the collection is the R five, and it is basically a permanent tag. Like it's it's incredibly strong, not kind of streptavidin biotin strong, but it, it is an immobilization tag, not a cleave. So you need to put a cleavage site in. Yes, that's what I was looking for, and when I saw it, I was like, no, 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 this doesn't seem to be what uh, uh, I I cannot use it to. Uh, yeah, an affinity tag. Yes. Yeah. So we've been trying. Um, so yeah, that's going to bind to silica, and it's going to stay there. We've had. Yes. Um, some people in, so that, that tag has been, um, I mean, developed by a number of groups, but Professor Lisa Hall here in Cambridge has had a number of projects working with it. And they've tried Intine, they've tried Protease sites. I mean, it all, as long as you can cleave the product off, it kind of works, but it's not necessarily that, it's not ideal. It's not also reusable at that point, really, because you've said, so we had a project which we're still writing up um, with a master's student last year, where he basically used the tag the sil silica tag to immobilize streptavidin on silica beads. So we basically took silica beads, dunked them in cell lysate that was expressing the silica tag combined with a, a streptavidin that's been engineered to be quite reversible. That we can't, it's not an open enzyme. We were doing it as proof of concept. So we'll have right. to figure out how we can do it. But, but basically then we had functionalized beads. You dunk the functionalized beads in a cell lysate that has your enzyme of, or protein of interest with a, uh, a streptavidin binding tag. So not biotin, um, but just a, a peptide. And then you can basically elute with biotin and it's it's reusable, it's quite nice. It's, I can pop the paper in the in the um, chat that we were looking at, but yeah, that that for that particular silica tag, I haven't really seen a reversible silica tag. I'm interested if anyone else has seen I, I that. think I, I found an, uh, a paper on that and I was trying to figure out if it's, because the author said that they filed for a patent, but the, uh, the, the paper was quite old. I can send, send yeah, you that yeah, paper. Yeah, pop it in yeah. the list, pop the paper down, happy to do some patent searching and, and clear it before we synthesize it. But yeah, reversible silica binding would be really nice. As I say, we've had to sort of <laughs> do some configurations to get that working in other ways. Thank you very much. No worries, thank you. Any other suggestions of people, things that are on people's wish list? Or other hosts, 
So we've talked a lot about E. coli and yeast and maybe a bit of cell free, but um, are there other hosts that people feel we could usefully have a, a boutique collection? We can't do like, we can't re reconstitute the E. coli collection for another host, but are there kind of some that you think are super interesting at the moment? Perplats would be nice. <laughs> What was that? Sorry, I missed the uh, for, for for plants. Plants. Ah, yes, yeah. of course. Um, yeah, so what what would be useful from a plant perspective? So I should also point out that there are some collections for plants. Um, there's like a MoClo toolkit from Nicola Patron's lab in Norwich and uh, various people from Open Plant and other groups have, have put plant collections out there. One of the things that we're trying to do as an aside from this is make the current collections more accessible. As you can tell, our documentation is not brilliant, which is a function of time availability mostly. Um, but we fortunately did get some, some funding last year to, to help make those more available on our website with the plant collections as well. And Felipe is kind of leading that work. Um, so I know Felipe, if you want to update a little bit on uh, what plant collections will be going on that website portal. Uh, I think we are still on a phase where we we don't necessarily know the scope that things are, are going to have in the end. So we, we currently don't know like which parts are going to be there. Well, there's definitely going to be like a Marcantia collection <laughs> for sure from Open Plant, um, which is this very primitive liverwort where there's a whole collection of promoters and other sequences. Um, Nicholas Moclo collection may be on there, but that's also available in AdGene as a complete kit, um, and then. At the end of the project that we're working on right now, there'll be a triterpene synthesis toolkit, which will also be shared. All right, we seem to have um, run out of steam on chat. Although more people interested in plants, maybe we need a we need a plant plant special interest group within <laughs> Reclone. Um, so I'll, we'll just do a, a zip around and just make sure everybody's had their time to contribute. So um, we've already heard from Scott, but is, is there anything that sort of sparked a thought, Scott, during the, the last bit of discussion that you'd like to add? Uh, no, not really. I think um, uh, it's great to see people coming up with different ideas. And uh, I know many people might be new to the whole concept of Golden Gate Assembly and uh, but um, yeah, I, I, I'm super excited about creating these um, toolkits and uh, using them. Uh, so yeah, great. And at the at so to the point of being new, at the end of the meeting, um, we'll take a couple of minutes to just ask kind of what what you would like um, from the community here. So if there's interest in particular meetings that we could run, if it's if it would be helpful to have a webinar on how to do Golden Gate Assembly, that kind of thing, um, just please send us your suggestions. I think, Sibeli, was there some place people can write that down or we were just going to collect them verbally? Uh, yes, we actually have a document also. Uh, everyone is welcome to contribute. Also, you can always reach out to us. Uh, you usually get emails from Yanke, Jenny, or from me. You can always reach out to us there also, uh, because exactly we're looking for suggestions. Next month, we have our symposium happening, and we want to have uh, also these longer sessions happening once uh, every once in a while. So yes, uh, please feel free to put your suggestions on the document or also reach out to us at any moment. We're really excited because uh, we are now uh, getting more information from our investors to showcase on our website and have a uh, reclone representation all over the world. Yes, definitely. And we'll reshare that link at the end of the meeting. But if there's stuff that's sort of complementary to DNA sequences, like protocol sharing, like anything else you think this community could do, then pop it in that one. Um, just going to go down the list, see if anyone's had any thoughts that have sparked during the conversation. Charlie, anything from your side that you think would be useful to include in a toolkit such as this? Um, no, it's such as thing. I don't. The only thing I was thinking was if anyone. I think most of this is more for production. Mm -hmm. There's, um, yeah. The only thing I was thinking was having like a, a range of fluorescent proteins. Like if people are doing like physiological studies with any of these or, or using it to build um like strains for physiological studies 
Um, so we, we like using like very fast maturing plasma proteins, which can be good for like tracking dynamic processes in cells. But um, yeah, if it's more for production, then uh, I don't have any specific ideas at this time. But. Well, we have so we have quite a few reporters. So if you've got better ones, I mean, the original intention of the collections is more for production, but um, it's we're open at this point to, <laughs> to including other stuff that would be useful. Interestingly, I saw on one of the Ginkgo have this discord for some of their events called Grove and someone was asking on there for uh, bacteria, bacterial strains that were constitutively expressing um, like genomically the fluorescent reporters just for kind of, I don't know what they were doing with them, but they wanted stuff that they just kind of could get the, the strain itself to be engineered to do that. And um, they did manage to find it somewhere and add gene. Someone had like put in a an ad gene deposit that happened to be that have the strain that was expressing, but it wasn't like actually the purpose of the ad gene deposit. So it seems like there's also some demand for cells that people can use for imaging and other stuff. I think I think well, we see this in Cambridge certainly that there's more and more people who are not from a biology background but want to do interesting imaging studies with cells. So I could see that being super useful. Do you put your fast maturing fluorescent proteins of preference in the in the spreadsheet? Mm -hmm. I think the main challenge we would have is just the IP situation, but mm -hmm. just pop it in. Say you haven't checked, and we'll we'll look and see what we can do. Great, thank you. Awesome. Uh, I can see who haven't we spoken to yet. Um, Charlene, do you have any suggestions that you'd like to throw into the mix while we have a few minutes? Uh, no, I, I think I'm good for now, uh, just absorbing uh, everything and maybe I'll add some suggestions to the document if I have any. Perfect. Thanks. Absorbing is great and do feel free to share. The spreadsheet is open for editing by anyone, so feel free to share it with colleagues and collaborators as well that you think might be interested to add something. Um, oh, Felipe has got his hand up. Over to you. Um, yeah, it's not uh, an idea about parts, uh, about enzymes to add, but maybe as a future direction to take uh, with our lab and with the, the collections. Uh, on top of the expression guides, maybe have some guides on quality control and benchmarking you can do mm -hmm. with the, I, I don't know if this is on protocols IO already because I haven't looked, but uh, just having some general guidelines on how to benchmark these, like when you when you actually produce the proteins, the, the enzymes, how, how do you know they're working and if they're working as well as they did for other people, I think it would be useful. That's a very good point. Yeah, and I think some members of the of the reclone community are working on that, but for certain enzymes, because it takes quite a while yeah. for enzyme to troubleshoot all this stuff. So if anyone is really wanting a particular enzyme and is happy to make a protocol like that, please, please share it <laughs> so that others can benefit from your hard work. Um, I know Danielle Guerra in Peru is doing a lot of work now with the RPA enzymes. Also, um, Tao uh, Opanamat in Thailand is also working a lot on the RPA enzymes, particularly his postdoc Amorn, so they can figure out how to individually test the function of each of those proteins because a number of them are chaperones and it's kind of tricky to figure out um, if they're functional or not before you put everything together and then you've got to deconstruct like five types of enzymes and a bunch of other factors in your mixture if it's not working. Um, so yeah, really good point. And I think we should definitely contribute those back. Uh, so Joshua Garcia, any, any suggestions from your end that would be really good to see? Uh, yeah, uh, hi everyone. Um, so I'm working under Doc Aaron uh, in the Philippines also. And uh, I was happy to hear that because we're uh, planning to uh, develop our own diagnostic toolkit. So I was happy to hear that um, uh, we can add nanobodies to the wish list. Uh, I was just wondering uh, if you guys have any other suggestions uh, that we can uh, bind to the nanobodies that we can use with the nanobodies, like uh, other reporters. Or um, other uh, like like other applications like what was mentioned was um, imaging. Uh, I read a paper where you can use nanobodies for uh, what do you call this? Um, 
for flow cytometry, uh, where you can add uh, nanobodies against uh, uh, whatever CD you're targeting, and then uh, adding reporters to the nanobodies. I, I was wondering if we can add uh, more stuff like that to the wish list. I would say stick it in. I'm not I'm not that familiar with nanobody based techniques. Anyone on the call worked with nanobodies? I'm not seeing any hands. So you might be a pioneer in that respect, at least in this community. <laughs> so um, but you know, keep share some ideas. I mean, feel free to post on the forum also, because there's quite a lot. We're we're only um 19 of us at the moment, um, but there's a lot more people on the forum that may have experience. Um, I can add one. Thing I'm trying to work on with some colleagues in Cambridge at the moment, which is um, hot start enzymes with either antibodies, it's probably single chain or nanobodies because they're easier to express. We have only, so there's, there's a few kind of monoclonal antibodies published that are hot starts um, uh, partners for TAC polymerase and a couple of others, but obviously monoclonals are a little bit of a pain for us. We'd rather have something that we you know we can just share the plasmid and express it. Um, so yeah, that's certainly something. There are some published aptamers also for hot start enzymes, and we're trying to cl collate the list of those too. Um, but I think some, I think we could probably get away with a smaller subset of hot hot bind um, antibodies than we have polymerases because there's quite a bit of con conservation across the sequences. So um, there's a colleague in biochemistry who's going to try some stuff against his binder libraries and see if we, if we can get something that is you know, applicable for a few of the different, uh, maybe per per sort of subset of pol polymerase families, maybe, we'll see. But that's something we, we don't have in the collection right now is, is mechanisms for hot start. Great, any other antibody-based suggestions <laughs> before we move on, or immunoassay suggestions? We do have horseradish peroxidase and alkaline phosphatase in the collection. I'm not aware of anyone who's worked with those yet, um, from, from, who's worked with the DNA from the collection. Of course, there are many people who do work on those proteins, but um, anything else on the, the immunoassay side before we continue down the list? This is what happens when you bring a community together who are very interested in nucleic acid diagnostics. <laughs> sort of the protein stuff gets pushed out. Um, so next on my uh, list of participants on the screen is Marjorie. Would you have any suggestions? Hi. Um, well, um, currently, I am. Uh, we're currently working on a project uh, on diagnostics, um, particularly on isothermal amplification. So that's uh, nucleic acid amplification. And what we are using now is uh, BSD 2.0 polymerase from NUB. However, we are having trouble with the sensitivity as well as specificity. So um, one of the... I think I read uh, one article wherein um, we can supply a... Um, what what do you call this? An um, endonuclease enzyme, um, wherein we can edit out some of the um, mismatches. So I think um, I think we can have I, one of my suggestions um, for an open enzyme is um, something like that, since only one supplier supplies that particular enzyme so that we can increase the specificity of our isothermal reaction. So I think um, I have to read up on what the, uh, that particular enzyme is and then try to put it up in the list. So that's what I'm currently interested in. That would be great. I'm sure many people would be very happy to hear anything that can improve their lamp reactions. A lot of people in this community working on lamp and other isothermal amplification methods. Um, so that would be great. Thank you very much for that. Um, moving down, I see Matthias. Is there anything that you'd like to suggest adding to the collection? I'm not sure if we still have Matthias. Um, 
Wendy, anything from your side? Yeah, my connection's not really good at the moment, but yeah, um, so I was just looking at the presentation earlier and I think it will take time to really just uh, be familiar with the, with the resources that are already available. I'm just curious for this particular round, is there a deadline um, when we can uh, add items to the wish list? And I'm sure um, like through the, the course of, of um, of just getting familiar with the resources, we can probably um, add a thing or two along the way. But for this particular round, um, when's the deadline? Excellent question. So um, yes, the probably the best way to see what is available is to go onto the available tab and to scroll down and see what you can find. Um, that doesn't though have the current open yeast collection, Scott. So we might need to add that one so people can see what's currently existing in the yeast collection. Um, I was going to set the deadline as next Friday. It's possible we can extend it, but the worst case scenario is that we actually have to place the order before the end of the month, in which case we need time to actually consolidate everything. Um, best case scenario is that I managed to figure out with Twist that we can pay up front because the main limitation on our side is when the funding needs to be spent. So if we can figure that out, then we can submit the sequences after the end of the month and then the pressure is off a little bit. So I should I should know what the deal is with that by the end of this week, early next. But for now, we're aiming to have as much as many suggestions as possible by next Friday, the 17th of March. Um, and then we will keep people informed as to whether they can carry on submitting. I would say in general though, just carry on adding stuff as you think of it. We'll leave the document up and we'll just flag what's been submitted. Um, and so people can keep, keep adding on and then as and when we get more funding in, we'll try and do more. Um, good question. Oh yeah, so Scott's just answered Adrian about um, free jeans. So those of you who've ordered stuff from free jeans at Stanford, will be familiar that they were shipping stuff out for free. That That's now subsided until there's more funding in the pot, which means that the timeline is somewhat kind of unclear. Um, so I think we're assuming that it might not start again, at least until maybe next year. Um, so we'll, we'll just have to see. Um, but we're trying to station the collections <laughs> with a number of people around the world. So those of you who already have them, um, if you order them from Free Jeans, your, your email address, is, if you agree to it, is already on the site for people to contact who are nearby. Um, for We're trying to position like several copies of the collections in um, nodes. Aaron is, we're talking to Aaron, who kindly will potentially host some in the Philippines, but we <laughs> are still figuring out um, how that will go. And then um, Maria Teresa in uh, Mendoza in Argentina will be a hub for certainly Argentina and, and potentially br more broadly. Um, and Elena Roska at Shesi University in Ghana has offered to be a sort of African node or at least an initial node. Um, so yeah, we're trying to visit, we're trying to get around the free genes um, pause in shipping. And also everything will go to AdGene. So for people who are able to afford ordering stuff from AdGene, it's a great way to get it. It's very quality controlled, which is excellent. And they do a really, really good job and it's all under open MTA. So, the collections will be available, just we recognize that in particularly in parts of the world where the shipping is quite expensive, it can be problematic. And so we are working on getting things out there. Um, I'm going to pause because we're only a couple of minutes away from the end of the session, which has been fantastic. We've got so many, so many ideas. I think we've probably exceeded the 20,000 pound budget a couple of times over, but that's no bad thing. Um, so, uh, so Sibeli, could you paste the link again? to that um, document for suggestions for the community. Uh, is that okay? And maybe just to remind people what they can add there. Yes, uh, great. So, well, here today we're working on the technical parts of the Reclon community, but also we have a lot of things that we want to focus exactly on the community. So uh, we have these events happening uh, the second Wednesday of every month. And we also will have our symposium happening 
now in April and we hope to have it periodically. But we also want to have other opportunities. Like Jenny said, we have space to maybe do some workshops, more technical troubleshooting and things like that. So we want to hear from you and this document is exactly focused on that. So please feel free to add your suggestions. Uh, we also have a form if you feel more like doing an anonymous feedback or sharing something. And of course, you can always reach out to us. Uh, we are always open to suggestions, recommendations, and see how we can improve and better support our recon community. Definitely. And if you are, for example, based in the Philippines and think we should be having more, more meetings at a better time zone for you guys, pop it in the document. <laughs> and similarly, if you're getting up at 6am, <laughs> we think we should be doing some more meetings later. We do recognise that time zones are, are a challenge. This is kind of like the middle ground where it's not 3 a.m. in the morning for most people, but we recognize it's not ideal. So any feedback you have like that, pop it on um, and we will you know, attempt to be responsive to that and, and try and get some meetings at different times scattered throughout the year, um, which is fine. It's helpful to have something in the diary regularly, but you, you know, it's, it's tough. Um, I think that's it from us and we've gone one minute over time. So thank you so much again for all the fantastic suggestions. Keep them coming. Um, we will keep you updated. Uh, join the forum if you have not already. Hopefully, Sabella, you can just pop a link in for signing up to the forum. The forum login should work. Ignore the registration page on the website. We moved servers and there's still a few broken kind of bits of plumbing in the internet at the moment. So um, sign up directly on the forum and you'll be set. And we'll send updates there on um, progress and how many, of, how many of these things we can shunt through. Share the spreadsheet with your friends. Let's get as many um, suggestions as possible. And thanks so much for taking an hour out of your day to help us make the collections better. Um, looking forward to seeing you next month um, for the symposium, which I thought was May, but that's good. <laughs> so apologies for announcing the wrong month earlier. Um, great. Bye, everybody. Have a good rest of your day, evening, Bye. morning, afternoon. Bye. Bye for now.